You look at this. Look at what the girls are using. So I feel a bit shy. <laughs> I feel like Cardi B's younger cousin. Hey guys, it's Steven here. Now I know you like to see me try new things, so I've signed up for a bunch of fitness classes from CrossFit, boxing, spinning, HIIT, even a Spartans boot camp. I work out maybe about once or twice a week. I've tried HIIT before, I head to the gym, but I'm still not sure if I'm ready for these workouts because they're fairly intense. At the peak of each workout, I'll have to recite a tongue twister. After, I'll rate it on a scale of one to five, with five being the most intense. Each instructor will also fill in this scorecard. But first, I think I should check in with a sports medicine doctor. Hello, doctor. Hello, Steve. Hi, Hello. thanks for seeing me. So I'm here because I want to get a bit of a pre-assessment before I go through a series of intense workouts. So I'm going to be doing quite a few of these, almost back to back, maybe one, two days of rest in between only. Is that enough? It's best that when you first start off the high intensity workout, to rest for at least two days. And what are some of the things I should do to avoid hurting myself? Mentally, it's always good, a good idea, especially when you first start off a new workout, uh, get yourself familiarised with right. the movement first. And second part is always physical. Yeah. Um, rest, hydration, um, okay. then stretching before the workout. But the thing is, I also want to push myself because the whole idea is to really work the body, right? So I know when I've gone too far. You should look out for red flags, chest pain, uh, you feel giddy, you feel like uh, you're going to vomit. Stop immediately. So let's find out if my body actually works. I believe you have some routines that I need to try. As I have no underlying health conditions, Dr. Tan proceeded straight to assessing my shoulder mobility, hamstring muscles, quadricep muscles, calf muscles, and my blood pressure. Based on our assessment today, mm -hmm. I think you are fit to go. Really? Okay. That's good to hear. Thanks so much, doctor. Well, there you have it. I know many of you love to see me suffer, so let the games begin. Right at Ground Zero is an indoor cycling class, consistent tempo work mixed together with some strength work uh, as well as some high intensity work. The environment here mimics a clubbing atmosphere. All of that put it together will kind of motivate you as you do the workout, push you a little bit more. If it's your first time, you want to come in early so that you can set up your bike on time. If it's too intense, just sit down or you can slow down. Common injuries I've seen, um, ankle sprain, also dehydration. So make sure that your shoes are worn properly, you want to stretch them down tight. You also want to watch your posture and your form. So take the time to correct your form. Because if you're not riding properly, the chances of you spraining your ankle and standing up is going to increase. It's really not quite right. Two night light nights when it's like night light on the light night like tonight. On average, you can expect to burn 300 to 500 calories. I will rate Mental Gain as a 5. This is a high intensity workout. Expect to face obstacles in class um, that will require you to find some motivation to push through and finish. In terms of the pain, I would say it's a bit about uh, maybe a 3. I know I'm still going to wake up uh, a bit with aches tomorrow. I think this time it's finally over. I guess after all, we're all just like a hamburger who goes to the gym, right? You know why? Because you want to have hot butts. So Varsity is one of our cardio programs. That's a little bit more focused on a hit approach, shorter periods of rest, and we're trying to get that heart rate really high. The movement's performed a lot faster. We have nine stations, three sets at every station, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. The second lap, one set at every station, 40 seconds of work, and 20 seconds of rest. And last one, one lap, 60 seconds of work, and 30 seconds of rest. Still going strong. <laughs> it still smells a little, but I'm hurting inside. Saved by the bell. It's 
very easy to move through and understand because we have the TVs which communicate the movements to them. They told me you were fat. Come on. Even changing positions is tough. We don't have prolonged periods of exertion. We have short, sharp bursts. And she put it in her batter and her batter was not bitter. So it was better Betty Butter bought a bit of better. Part of the key is they don't want you to give you a chance to let your heart rate go down, so you're pumped all the way. More common injuries we see result from overtraining, so they'll come in five, six, sometimes seven days a week. They might have a slight niggle or something. They should really go and see a physio or maybe take a week's rest. Oh, the music stops, so we can't do it. Keep going. Oh, there's no music playing. I don't not inspire it. <laughs> In terms of intensity, I gotta admit there were times I felt like I was at a six or a seven. My heart was jumping out of my body, you know, I mean, and I really couldn't carry on. And three, two, and one, two, three, two. Ah. Boxfit is actually a combination of the conditioning aspect of boxing and also boxing skill. So we actually do certain exercises that include uh, boxing movements and also uh, introducing our members to hit the bags and also doing some back work. A combination. Today I'll show you how it's done. Uh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, cross. Yeah, cross. Yeah, cross. Yeah. 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 A lot of people would tend to go for boxing classes but only train on their skill. But they would tend to neglect the uh, conditioning part of it. For the first timers, there's a lot of dynamic workout which they might not get used to because it requires them to move. So common injuries would be back pains and the knee pains. Most of them are usually good at the boxing part of it. But in terms of weight wise, it's something new for them, so usually they will tend to get injured. Common mistake uh, when they tend to squat down, they tend to push their knees forward and then squat down. So as you can see, my heels are lifting off the floor. Let's say someone couldn't do a proper squat itself, where they can only squat this way, then we will tend to do like a box squat, where they just squat halfway mark. Five, four, three, two, one, and ah. let's go! Last ah. one! Ah. Last one, finish! Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. A pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked. Did Peter Piper pick a pack of pickled peppers? Where's the pack of pickled peppers? Peter Piper picked. Hey. Certain exercises do require them to work a little bit more on their footwork. It's a circuit base. We would expect their heart rate to be their maximum. So usually they would burn maybe about 600, 700 calories in a session. They do have to push themselves throughout the workout. Burn, burn, burn. In terms of the uh, intensity, is about uh, a four. Go for another round. Uh, no, this this round was on the house for for you guys for filming. And the next round, you gotta pay me to do it. <laughs> Boxing looks much easier on TV, but it definitely is not. Urban workout of the day is uh, our version of a CrossFit WOD. So it'll be a one hour long workout, warm up, strength or skill component, followed by a conditioning piece. This, look at what the girls are using. So I feel a bit shy. <laughs> <laughs> The difference between a HIIT workout and CrossFit will be that you'll learn some unique movements such as Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics, that you won't see in a regular HIIT workout. CrossFit can feel a little bit intimidating for most people, but you'll, uh, once you've tried it out, you'll see that it's uh, actually very accessible. I think with CrossFit, we are uh, doing technical movements, low heavy weights. So uh, some people do experience back injuries, shoulder injuries. For example, we're doing thrusters. If you're starting to get very heavy and you get tired, and you're not very mindful of your technique, you can start overloading the lower back and hurt your lower back. Can we just hang here for a bit? <laughs> oh, trees, trees, trees. 
That's what made these three free flea sneeze. Oh. Our key focus is always your back. Right? Making sure that you keep your chest up, making sure that you stay on the heels of your feet rather than rolling onto your toes. It's super painful. It's as painful as some of the other ones I tried. Good fun because you get people with you, they're screaming at you, say, keep going, last two, last minute, you know, so that keeps you going as well. Ah. Oh. oh, the killer. I can't see anything. Love the push, love the push. Good job. At Ministry of Fitness, the Spartan Bootcamp is a training aimed at preparing you for a Spartan race. It's an endurance-based session, so we're going to look at doing uh, a number of ex exercises over half an hour, uh, and you can be working non-stop, uh, and then practice the transitioning between the high heart rate, fatigued muscles, and the obstacles. I, was say, I feel like Cardi B's younger cousin, Cardi O. Yeah, nothing to say. <laughs> Bad dead. <laughs> Uh, so the unique selling point of the Spartan Bootcamp uh, is the ability to add the obstacles into a workout. It gives you something to work on both skill-based uh, as well as development within your strength. One more. So one common injury I see a lot is actually knees. It's usually due to inflexibility. So tight hamstrings, tight calves, tight quads, all pulling on each other, it gives people knee pain. But you can get rid of that by just increasing the amount of time you stretch. Uh, other injuries you can see, is potentially rope burn on the ropes. Definitely don't slide down them. You've got to make sure you use the correct technique. Which means saw, so, so. That saw seen seesaw. Seesaw would not have sawed. Saws, seesaw. And your heart rate should hopefully be going pretty high throughout because that's what it's going to feel like in the race. In terms of intensity, it was there to five because there are points where you are really breathless. My heart rate was way up. I like the fact that you get to try different things with the obstacles. Go. Whoa. Ah. Ah. I don't think it can reach the other one. Just hanging around. For beginner, um, I would say twice per week is maximum for a high intensity workout. Doesn't mean that you are not doing anything. In between, you still can do other lighter workout like a slow running, walking, or even stretching workout like a yoga as well. So these two weeks have gone by real quick and I gotta say I feel pretty good. I think the most fun workout was spinning because I had that loud thumping, clubbing music and everyone had these dance moves and moving in sync. I almost felt like I was part of a dance crew. Uh, the most painful post-workout was probably CrossFit. I think because we were using weights and working out parts of my body that I don't normally use that much. But every session was just as intense. I think I was sweating buckets, my heart rate was way up there. And you know, you really felt like you had a great workout. My advice is go at your own pace, it'll be different for everyone. All of these workouts push you hard, but you need to know your limits. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, do join us on CNA Insider. Just hit the subscribe button below. Till next time, bye-bye.